Hi all there, Biff Baxter with Water West Linux. Wanted to give you a quick demonstration of MicroWatt uh, as its uh, new release under WattOS R9 or Release 9. Um, the thing we've changed significantly about MicroWatt Release 9 is that we have uh, gone with a lighter weight um, user interface and it's a little different than what some people might be used to. So I wanted to spend a few minutes to talk about that and what that looks like. So to make the memory footprint as small as possible but still give usability and some basic applications for you to be able to install on legacy systems, old systems, or just if you want something minimal and lightweight and fast that you can build from, um, we have selected the i3 window manager. Now i3 is uh, significantly different than uh, what you may be used to because it is a tiling window manager, um, which you may not be used to because a typical window manager you might be using is a floating window manager. So uh, we're going to explain the differences a little bit on that. I'm going to give a quick demonstration of some things to show you that these tiling window managers are not so scary and you can in fact be very productive with them. And uh, so we've built this as the basis for MicroWatt. Some people are going to like it, some people won't, and that's okay because uh, you can always uh, install additional user interfaces if you'd like. But this will give you a nice minimal install uh, with very low memory overhead. So um, we've created a wallpaper on the back here with some keyboard shortcuts. You can change it obviously after you install, but it gives you an idea of the different key combinations you can use. Um, you'll notice there's no icons on the desktop. Um, also, when you move the mouse around on the screen by default, right and left click, you don't get any menus, um, and that's uh, by design. Um, if you look at the middle part, um, the, the, the word you will always hear used is the mod key, and uh, by default in this configuration we have set up the Windows key as the mod key, which is a modifier key, and you can use that in combination with other keys as you see on the screen here to give you uh, different windows and applications to run. So to start with, if you wanted to open up a terminal, you would just hit uh, Windows and Enter and you'll get a terminal and uh, from there you could obviously enter any commands you want. Now the th again, the thing that's interesting about a tiling window manager is if I wanted to open a second terminal, I could hit Mod Enter again, so Windows key Enter again, and there's a second window. And as you can see, it automatically split the screen in half and they are uh, right next to each other. If I did it a third time, I would get a third window, and so on. So um, that's an interesting and different paradigm than you may be used to. Um, uh, additionally, um, if you want to open up a file manager, we've included PCMan FM, which some of you are probably familiar with. You hit the mod F key to open that up for file. So Windows F to open up files, and you'll see you've got a normal window manager and a theme that we've used on the previous couple of uh, builds of WattOS. Um, so you see your normal window manager there. Additionally, if you're not comfortable with just using uh, uh, keyboard shortcuts, um, you can open up PC Man and you can always go to the applications um, shortcut right here and you'll see your normal applications there and you can click on accessories and see uh, the applications you might expect to be installed. Um, we've included the Midori web browser which is lightweight and, um, and um, even though it's a minimal install we did include flash support so that you get a, a, a basic uh, fully functioning web browser experience out of the box because there's still some uh, flash out there in the wild that you're going to run into. So uh, sites like ESPN and YouTube and other ones we've tested, and they've all worked. Um, and again, you'll see that it's just very minimal things that we've put in here. Uh, we have included HTOP, which shows memory usage. Um, in this particular case, I have XFBurn installed, but you have options to install that. Uh, preferences uh, and, and we've installed language support so you can uh, use the GUI and easily change the language if you need to. Uh, basic monitor support so you can change it with the GUI for that. So it's not entirely keyboard driven but we have made it easier for you um, and included some additional functionality um, while trying to keep the size minimal. Um, in testing so far that we've done with MicroWatt um, we've seen the memory footprint well, well under 128 meg um, on uh, running it even on the live CD and then on install even less depending upon how many other services and things you have running. So again, uh, the interesting thing about the keyboard shortcuts is you can do different things. So again, so Windows F for file manager and then if I wanted to open a browser uh, we've got it mapped to Windows B or Mod B to open up the Midori browser and you'll see that it loads to the Planet Watt homepage at this point, Watt OS homepage. Um, you can use Mod L or Windows L, which would be the same as your Windows machines if you're using those, and some other distributions also use this. Mod L to lock the screen. Cool thing about locking the screen, you lock the screen, it just goes black. Um, 
you have no, you can't move the mouse and get any indication. You don't get anything. You don't get any menus or pop-ups or anything like that. You just have to type the password in from this screen, which um, uh, in this particular case is uh, just password. So um, if you enter the wrong password, you'll see it'll verify and fail. So the screen screen locks uh, kind of cool uh, because uh, folks may not be used to seeing that. And uh, again, you just enter your password and away you go. Uh, we've included a few little laptop tools. So Windows F9 and Windows F10 turn the uh, mouse pad on and off. If you have like a Synaptics compatible mouse pad on your laptop, you can turn it off with that. Um, you'll notice also it says Mod Shift Q to close a window. You can also use whatever application support uh, you have, like Control W or other keys to close a window. I'm going to give you a couple of quick examples to just show you. Uh, so I'm going to open a terminal, and then after that I am going to open uh, a file manager, and then I'm also going to open a web browser. And you can see it automatically arranges them into uh, a three tile format. You can actually change this layout if you'd like. Um, if you want them stacked vertically, you can leave them like that. Uh, additionally, you can hit the mod E key to change them horizontally or hit it again to change them back vertically. Additionally, there's uh, several other um, tiling modes you can use. Um, you can use what's called stacking mode, so that's the mod S key, and that will put all three windows in a stacked layout. You can see that there are three bars here where you can just click on with your mouse or alternatively use the mod up and down arrow keys to change to each of those windows, which again is kind of a nice use of real estate. Additionally, you can hit the um, mod W key to give you a tabbed layout. And so you again, now you have three tabs across the top. And if I open additional windows, let's say I open another terminal, if I hit uh, mod enter again, now I have four tabs. And I have four tabs now, and uh, they're across the top. So again, good use of screen real estate. If I want to go back to my tiling layout, again, I just hit mod E, and I'm back to my tiled layout. And then if I want to get rid of these windows, I can either just use the command to exit, or I can hit the mod shift Q, or again, some applications support control W for closing a tab or control Q for closing a window within particular applications. It's different for each one. Um, the other thing you can do is you can rearrange how your windows are. Um, you can also split them vertically and horizontally. Um, so you can uh, uh, do that. So I'm going to close these out and give you an example. So if I open a terminal and then I open a file manager and then let's say I have a terminal over here and I want to split that um, in half horizontally, I can go control or mod key H and then mod enter and now I have a horizontal window. And then if I want to move any of these, I can move them as well. I can just hover over them. You can see that they're mouse focused. I can hover over one and, and uh, then use the um, windows key again, shift and then left or right arrow keys to move that window wherever I would like to change the layout. So uh, that's kind of cool. So again, you've got complete control over what, how you want things to, uh, how you want them to look. Additionally, if y you need some screen real estate and you want to be full screen, again, the, the quick and easy way would be to go um, mod S to go stacking or, or to uh, tabbing. Um, additionally, you can do up to nine, really 10 workspaces. If you look on the lower left-hand corner, you see that there's a number one there. If I wanted to create an additional workspace, I could move any of these to them. Again, if I put the focus on any of those, like my browser or my uh, file manager, and I wanted to move it to another workspace so I could work on it because I'm comfortable that way, I would then hold down the Windows Shift 2, and now I have a 2 down here, and you can see I have an additional workspace. And again, I can do the same thing and create additional workspaces. So if I just hit uh, Windows Key 3 or Mod 3, and then let's say I hit um, Windows key B to open a browser. Now I have three workspaces and each of them can be changed to by hitting the Windows key 1, 2, or 3. 1, 2, 3. Or if I, again, if I'm more mouse centric and I'm just getting used to things, I can even put my mouse pointer down here, use the mouse wheel to switch between the three, which again, some people prefer to do. Um, and the uh, same thing with stacking or if you're um, uh, have tabbed, you can use the mouse wheel to move back and forth again if you're more mouse centric. Um, so again, maximum flexibility there and uh, mod shift Q, mod shift Q uh, to close particular windows. Um, we also have a built-in uh, root file manager which sometimes um, is, you need if you need to modify files and don't want to do it via command line. 
Uh, again, remember um, Windows F opens up the file manager. Windows Shift F will prompt you for a password. You put your credentials in and now you have a root file manager. Uh, made it look different on purpose so that you know that you're in a root file manager so you can modify any file you want. Um, again, without having to do extra things which is kind of nice. Um, additionally, uh, one uh, more thing here is if you want a window to float, which is what you would normally see from a window manager, you can actually uh, make any window you want float. So let's pretend I want my, my uh, terminal here to float because um, I have it open for whatever reason. I'm looking at files. Uh, you can hold down Windows Shift Spacebar and now that window is floating and I can move it around and uh, do things with it. Um, additionally, if I want to put it back to tiling again, I can just hit Windows Shift uh, Spacebar again and it'll go back to tiling. So, same thing with any application that you have open. If you want it to float uh, for whatever reason, uh, you want to move it out of the way, you want to, you, you don't want it, it doesn't like being tiled. Some applications are not, uh, um, don't behave exactly the way you'd expect them to. So, again, I'm on Shift Space for any of those and then you can move them around and do things with them or mod shift space again to retile them again and again to move them around um, mod shift left right arrow or if I had them tiled vertically you can go up down so again you've got maximum flexibility um, for that um, there's also another really neat feature um, called the scratch pad that's on i3 that you can actually take any particular window you want and have it as yours quote unquote scratch pad. Some people use like a notepad or a wiki or something maybe they have on their desktop and they want to leave it open. Maybe you're going to use your keyboard shortcuts and have it as a reference. You can move anything, any window you want to your scratch pad and it will disappear. So let's take this file manager and move it to my scratch pad. That's going to be a Windows Shift minus and you're going to see that it's now disappeared. Well, it, it, it didn't close, but it is it is gone and out of the way, no matter what workspace I go to, until I'm ready to use it again. And if I want to bring it back, then, then I just hit the Windows minus key, and it'll be back for me. So again, kind of a neat thing if you're taking notes, or if you're trying to reference a command, um, or you just you, know, you use it for your music player, whatever, you can, again, hit Mod minus again, Windows minus again, and have it disappear and you can go anywhere and bring it back up um, or make it disappear again. So scratch pads and neat uh, uh, features and again um, something for you to take a look at. Uh, additionally if you look at the home directory once you install microwatt again you've got no uh, desktop icons as you see but the default directory under the file manager for me of course it's home biff but for you whatever you install it or whatever uh, it'll be home guest until you install it you'll see an icon here for installing Watt OS R9 it's the same installer you've seen on other versions you just click on it it's a full GUI just follow it as it installs and it works like a champ. Um, there is a readme file here. That readme file is primarily for this scripts directory. What we have done is we have created a um, uh, discard old tabs. So we will get rid of that and we will open up this readme file and you'll see that it's just talking about if you use the scripts directory it's a quick shortcut to install maybe some additional basic services that you might want um, that were not installed by default like uh, XF burn for CD-ROM burning, VLC uh, for video playing, uh, printing capability so the installation of cups and, and uh, the print service so you can uh, map and install printers, um, Audacious Music Player, and then Cheese, which is a webcam software. So uh, again, just quick and easy scripts if you want to use them. The very first thing you have to understand is you got to make sure that you're connected to the internet first and then run the update script. Um, you don't have to use any of these. You can always use Synaptic, which is the uh, package manager to go install whatever software you'd like. Um, but these were just put here as uh, convenience items for you in case you would like to do that. Um, additionally, there is a run menu that is um, uh, kind of nice to uh, make your life a little easier to find things. If you're at this desktop, you just hit uh, Windows key G, and again, that's uh, noted on here. You can hit Windows G, Windows key G, and then a run program dialog comes up. It has ta it has tab completion, so if you know at least part of the command, so let's pretend I want to get Midori open. I could type MID, hit tab, it's going to auto-complete Midori for me, which is the web browser, and open it up. So, um, a nice um, uh, thing there. You can also actually run um, full commands here if you'd like. Um, there is a built-in screenshot program, it's called Scrot, so if you're in a particular area and you want to take a screenshot of something, I could just hit, uh, again, the uh, 
uh, Windows key G, type in Scrot, and it's going to make take a screenshot of the entire screen, place it in your home directory, and as a uh, graphics file, and away you go. So again, another nice thing, um, we have the I, uh, editing i3 is really easy. You don't need to know programming. You don't need to know a bunch of arcing commands. It's really a single uh, configuration file under your um, configuration directory in your home directory. There's a flat file there called config. It's just plain text. You open it up and you can read it. You can change the keyboard commands to whatever you'd like. So let's, if you don't like uh, Windows key F for files, you want to change it to something else, feel free. Um, you can also change all of the keyboard commands to move your windows around, uh, which is kind of nice. And um, it gives you full functionality and control over your desktop. Uh, one last thing before I wrap up. Um, if you look in the lower right-hand corner, there are also startup applications. That Those startup applications, again, are also controlled within that, uh, within that directory. If we look under i3 under config, this little text flat file, again, you can go in here and change uh, startup, uh, your startup apps right here if you'd like. And um, by default, we have included a couple of things for convenience. The ones that are most common, uh, we did include Network Manager. So if you were on a wireless network, you would see and, and you would see the wireless networks. You can edit your network connections. We've also included the uh, Power Manager. So if you want to change um, your settings for power, you can do that here as well with a GUI. So we have included some convenience. It's not completely bare, but it will take you a little bit to get used to the notion of using a tiling window manager. But I would invite you to, to give it a try. I think that you'll find it very interesting. Um, I've been using them for a couple of years and frankly it's really hard to go back once you have gotten yourself and your fingers and your brain uh, uh, trained to use a tiling window manager. It's much more productive and you can move fast and low memory overhead so older systems run really fast and uh, it's just a great thing. So we hope you enjoy the new version of MicroWatt. We're going to be posting new screenshots and updates and a wiki and all kinds of additional things for this to support folks who would like to give this a try. So head on over to planetwatt.com and uh, give it a download and uh, give us some feedback and let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.